insight about how how to empower patient by their patient reported outcomes. So uh, the floor is, uh, is yours, Florian. Thank you, Rada, and thanks for um, your kind introduction and also for the possibility to speak here. Um, I'm having the time uh, in mind and I'm trying to keep it really short and brief. So I want to talk now about uh, empowering patients by incorporating patient reported outcomes into the clinical decision-making process and into research. And I will uh, introduce you to H2O's project um, and approach um, to this interoperability issue. So we first um, I want to, to um, draw the motivation for this and then talk about the project, about the vision and the mission um, of H2O, and then um, some sentences about the situation in, in Austria. So I'm starting off with the motivation. So why do we uh, need a project like h 2 um, As we heard before, before, there's currently an underutilization of the patient's view uh, on health outcomes. Um, before we talked about uh, patient contributed data and here we're talking about a subset um, about uh, patient contributed outcomes data, let's, let's say that way. And those outcomes data can include a lot of things. For example, the level of satisfaction with the current health status uh, quality of life measures, but also the capability of performing daily activities and other things like symptoms relief. And as we heard uh, in the first keynote talk um, of this symposium, and we cannot improve anything that we can't measure. So understanding outcomes is really desirable uh, in an ethical way, but also fundamental to really improve outcomes. And there is a lot of standardization and um, efforts um, on the way, um, but we see that there is a, la a lack of a widespread adoption of these and generated evidence based on these outcomes measures really limited and there's little impact on clinical decision making on an individual level. So the h 2 project, um, h 2 stands for Health Outcomes Observatory and it's uh, uh, innovative uh, medicines initiative project and therefore also horizon 2020 funded project it's structured in a public private control team way and it's led by takeda and the medical university of vienna um, and the h project really um, um captures a, a broad crude group of stakeholders including patients patient advocates clinicians among others and they are all included um, into the decision-making inside the organization of H2O. And what binds all of those uh, different stakeholders together is really that all of them recognize the importance of addressing patients' needs to achieve better outcomes in the end. So when it comes to the H2O vision, the analogy here is really that data is an essential resource like water. And H2O wants to provide uh, ecosystem to collect and incorporate uh, patient reported outcomes into the healthcare decision making in a safe way. And the first thing to achieve this is really to select or establish a broadly as, um, accepted um, outcome set. So really establishing a set, uh, a standard for outcomes. Um, the other part of the analogy is that data like water is really a precious resource so it needs to be handled with care therefore it provides uh, it um, requires really a, a strong and rigid data governance framework which will be provided by the h Core project and the overarching goal here or um, the overarching goal or the, or the, the main principle here is really that in, in all phases of the project um, protecting patients privacy rights is really key so the primary aim um, of H2O is, is really um, to provide patients and their care providers uh, with information for the individual clinical care situation, for um, decisions that, made for, that are made for one um, individual patient. And we also want to foster patient engagement and empowerment and doing this by providing user-friendly systems for patients and the healthcare providers. One of such systems could be a patient-facing um, dashboard-like app 
where patients can uh, really view um, their health related information and also compare themselves with other patients and therefore uh, give them a say or give them a means to communicate their status with, um, for example, the care providers. And this comes really in the, in, in, in the sense of, of the previous keynote that this really gives the patient a voice or tries to give the patient a voice. A voice. Um, at the same time, um, this patient facing app might have, an, uh, have another side to it, uh, the side of the care provider, uh, which incorporates uh, other clinical information. So really key is here to pro provide user-friendly tools that fit the needs of the users. A secondary aim of H2O um, is really to use outcomes data um, for a broader healthcare decision making. And therefore, by collecting and analyzing this data and um, building knowledge on outcomes. And H2O itself uh, sees um, this project as a catalyst project that uh, simulates the interest in outcomes data uh, overall and maybe um, will lead to other projects in this industry. And the initial focus of this project um, will lie in four countries and on and three disease areas um, with an incentive of extension in the future. Uh, the H2O infrastructure will be built in a federated uh, architecture style. So there will be uh, national observatories in place, one of which will be in Austria. And the national observatory is really in charge of, of the data and keeping this data safe. Um, the locality of data is a key principle here. So data of patients really um, should not move, um, should move as little as possible and stay uh, at this place where it is generated or recorded. And this national observatories will be overarched by a European observatory um, that really um, provides the governance framework and provides tools to provide uh, to perform analysis on this data. And to test the feasibility of this um, infrastructure style, um, there are pilot projects conducted, one of which is in Austria. And let me just mention a few sentences about the situation in Austria. And there will be, or there is a national observatory already in place. It's a separate nonprofit legal entity. And part of the infrastructure of the National Observatory is hosted at the Austrian National Public Health Institute. And the situation at, at my place of work at the Medical University of Vienna and the General Hospital of Vienna, Vienna is that um, this hospital has access to, for example, electronic health record data and, and tries to access this through the H2O system. The H2O system will itself provide and the mentioned um, applications that give patients really access to their outcomes data and to um, anonymized data of other patients and also um, provide means of communication with the caregiver and also the caregiver will have um, some kind of application and there are other data sources in place for example um, at our university hospital and um, there's a research database that also will be accessed and doing so in this uh, federated um, architecture of the H2O project, uh, we will use mainly two um, data standards, one of uh, which is for clinical data and the other is really for anonymized uh, health data that can be used uh, in research later on. So this was my really brief and short uh, talk. Uh, I talked about how H2O will try to achieve better outcomes by providing this e ecosystem to make um, outcomes data really accessible and accessible for individuals, but also their caregivers and um, to be used in an individual um, care decision making. And it will do this in a federated infrastructure way and by providing digital tools. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Florian, for this insight about the H2O. Uh, we don't have any question in the 
and the QA tool, but I have a question for you. So uh, 